And he then gives us a principle that there are two parts to Zionism. Sometimes I say that there's two different issues. There's Israel, state of Israel, and there's Zionism, which are two different things. I'm, I'm going to say it a little differently now. There's the Zionist movement and the Zionist ideology. It's important to distinguish between the two for several reasons. Kloloi shal dovor, he says. Molvad ovoin hachomer shal havar al hashvois oi timuk espes Yisroel vezuamas haminus vahakfiver rachmon al etzlan. It means like this. You know how we always say how the Zionists have incredible propaganda? So the Rebbe says this towards the end of the Hakdama. One of the biggest accomplishments of Zionist propaganda, and one of their favorite propaganda methods, is making believe, pretending, that Zionism is a movement only and not an ideology. They have a lot of motive to do that. The Zionist movement was a movement to a project to create the state of Israel. The Zionist ideology is the Zionist interpretation of Jewish identity, that Jews are a nationality, not a religion. It's the Jewish narrative of history, where we're always persecuted and we're always trying to gain our independence, our self-determination, and we're always being thwarted by the goyim, and that our desires to be in Eretz Yisrael one day means am chofshi be'artzenu rachmon al-Islan, as opposed to taking part in the arrival of Mashiach. The entire Zionist narrative, the entire ideology, is a mythology that was created out of thin air, and it's all of Oidezora Apikorsis. The idea that to be a loyal Jew, what you need is to be loyal to the nation, not to be loyal to Hashem. That makes you a loyal Jew. The idea is Avoidezora. The idea that Jewish identity consists of land, language, culture, common history, ethnicity, race, what have you, as opposed to being Makabal Torah and Harsina, is all Zionist ideology. The Zionists want to downplay the fact that Zionism is an ideology, and they want to focus only on the Zionist movement. Many examples. You'll hear all the time that, what do you mean? Zionism is only the, self de- the fact that Jews are entitled to self-determination like everybody else. The Jews are entitled to a state. That's all Zionism is. The Jews should be free of anti-Semitism. That's all that Zionism is. What are they doing? They're hiding the entire ideology of Zionism and s- claiming that Zionism consists only of the movement of creating a state. Now, you can have an ideology and not join a movement. Let's say, call, I don't know what, uh, feminist movement. Let's say feminist movement wants women to have certain rights, more than men, or whatever. Uh, You could have a feminist ideology without lobbying for the feminist uh, interests, without even agreeing for the femis- to, with the feminist interests. You can be a Zionist and believe the whole Zionist ideology and not be part of the Zionist movement. Vaharai, all the Zionists before the Zionist movement was invented, were those Zionists. Even before Herzl uh, created this movement to make a Medina, there were Zionists way before him. They're downplayed. I'm not even talking about Moses Hess, Emma Lazarus, these people. But all over Europe, there were people who were agitating for, in local elections, local elections in various countries, Poland, Galicia, wherever. 
like here we have Democrats and Republicans as like the two main parties, right? It's like most of the world is like that. So the Jews had two parties. One was more inclined towards assimilation, which means the Jews are not a nationality, and our interests are the same as the Poles, for example. The others are, no, the Jews have Jewish interests, and the Jews are a nationality. They were the nationalist Jews and the assimilationist Jews. We wouldn't call them assimilationist Jews, but that was, that was basically what, what they were called. And this was way before an idea of making a Medina. First step in Zionist Zionism was nationalization, the idea that the Jews are a nationality. Remember what Reb Chaim Briska said? The Zionists won, even if they won't make a Medina because they convinced the Jews that they're a nation. The Jews are not a nation. Now, what this means, we're not a nation. Some people say, well, no, we're a nation, but it's the Torah that holds us together. No. Bagoyim lo yischashov. A nation, by definition, means a group of people that are held together by political factors. Common history, common land, common language, common dot, dot, dot. That's not the Jews. You may as well say the Jews are a, a baseball team, but held together by religion instead of baseball. Or we're, we're say the Jews are a team, or not a team. A team is a different concept, and a nation is a different concept also. Bagoyim lo yischashov. You can use the word loosely and call the Jews a nation, where I'm Yisrael, right? Uh, but an am is different than a goy, as I wrote in my book. There are different shittas. Why, why, on top of the line, I put Rebel Khan on different translations. But however you're going to translate the word am or goy, whatever it is, and however you're going to use the English language, nation, a people, whatever, the Jews are just Jews because you're Makabal Atar and Harsina. You know the reason. So the use of the word nation, of course, you could use the word nation or use the word people, singular or plural, in any way you want. But the idea that we are not a goy, we are not a nation at all, means that what binds Jews together is nothing except Torah. If there wouldn't be Torah, it's not the pshat there would be Jews, but they wouldn't be bound together. There would be no Jews. Let's understand that. If there would be no Torah, there would be no Jews. Not the pshat there'd be Jews, but we'd be loose. We wouldn't have no. There would be no Jews without the Torah. That's it. That's a completely different concept of what the goyim call a nation. Again, you can translate am any way you want. You can translate goy any way you want. You could use any word in the dictionary that you like. But what they, when the goyim call a group of people a nation, that has nothing to do with Klal Yisrael, who were created. We received a new neshama. We received a new guf. We were transformed into Jews at Har Sinai because we said, yes, we will accept the Torah, Nasev and Nishma. It's extremely important to remember that. The upshot is, here's the nafkamina lahalacha. If somebody does not believe in the Torah, he does not believe the Jewish people exist. It is not possible for an atheist to believe the Jewish people exist. And what he says is the Jewish people is not what we call the Jewish people. Never mind that you you'll always win an argument with the guy if you ask him what a Jewish person is because there is no consistent definition of Jew except for hours of Kabbalah Satoya. What does the word even mean? If somebody does not believe in Kabbalah Satoya, he does not believe in the Jewish people. And if you have an atheist or somebody that doesn't believe in Kabbalah Satoya that identifies as a Jew... He doesn't identify as what we call Jewish. He identifies as with some ethnicity that he claims exists, irrelevant to us whether it exists, but that's not our Jewishness. He may identify as a member of some nationality, 
That's not Jewishness. Without Kabbalah Satayra, it's not the Pshat we have nothing to hold, to hold us together and we'll fall apart. Without Kabbalah Satayra, we are not Jews. We need to chaza this all the time. The idea that you could be Jews without a Kabbalah Satayra, that is Zionism. That's the Zionist ideology. So again, Reb Nochem has a question. But an atheist is chayiv in mitzvahs? Yeah, the atheist is chayiv in mitzvahs because my definition of Jew is right. This atheist, whether he believes it or not, and he doesn't, was Makabal Torah and Har Sinai in the year 2448 in his neshama without his guf. But that's my belief. He doesn't believe he's chayiv in mitzvahs. So what does he think his Jewishness is? I don't know what he thinks it is. Let him figure it out. But whatever he thinks it is, it's not what we think it is. If a person does not believe in the Torah, he cannot believe in the Jewish people. Question. If a person doesn't believe in a Torah, could he believe that Mon fell from Shemayim? Can an atheist believe that Mon fell from Shemayim? No. Can an atheist believe that Hashem split the Yamsuf? No. Can an atheist believe that Adam Harishan spoke to the Nochash HaKadmoini? No. Can an atheist believe that the Jews were created by Hashem in return for their commitment to follow Tayag Mitzvahs? No. End of story. The Zionists created a definitively Jewish identity that even an atheist can have even somebody maybe he believes in some god he's a deist he believes in some god but he doesn't believe in Kabbalah Satoyer from Har Sinai or maybe he's a reconstructionist who believes in some strange type god Maybe he believes in some non-personal God, whatever that means. Maybe he believes in Christianity. Actually, the Christians can believe they were Jews because they believe in Kabbalah Satira. Just, they believe in New Testament, they believe in, 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 in their Messiah. But a guy that doesn't believe in Kabbalah Satira... He cannot believe they were Jews. That's the Zionist ideology. Now, you will never find the Zionists talking about Zionist ideology. You will always find Zionists defining Zionism as the Zionist movement. The reason for this is because the Zionists don't want anybody to know that this Zionist ideology is Zionist ideology. They want people to think that this is Jewish ideology. They want everybody to think that they did not invent that ideology, that that ideology was the self-evident, default, axiomatic Jewish mindset from the beginning of Bria Sa'ulam until today. They don't want anybody to know they invented their Jewish identity. Then guess what? Their Jewish identity is exposed as a fraud. They don't want anybody to know that they invented the idea that the Jews are a nationality. They want everyone to think the Jews always believed they were a nationality, except maybe they went into Golos and then they got messed up in the head and, and they became religious and then they thought they were a religion or the Jews used the religion to hold themselves together, etc. But they don't want you to know that they invented this Zionist ideology. So you will never find Zionists talking about how the Zionists invented Zionist ideology. When Reb Chaim Briska said they won the war because they got the Jews to, believe, to look at themselves as a nationality, what it means is that they got the Jews to believe that they always were a nationality. So that's why you'll, you'll see Zionists saying, so, what do you mean? All Zionism is self-determination for the Jews. That's all it is. Not true. It's an entire philosophy of Judaism, an entire Jewish narrative. But they don't want you to know that. This is also why 
we had it this much of Shabbos. Some of you were here. When somebody had said, there's the usual, you hear this all the time, there's no more Zionists nowadays. Now, what kind of nonsense is that? Post-Zion, post, we live in post-Zionist Tkufa. Now, what kind of nonsense is that? Two minutes ago, they made a law that Israel is the nation state of all the Jewish people. They're running around saying that, that the Jewish chedorim have to have Zionist education. Those are their words, Zionist education. Every Tuesday and Thursday, they're talking about Zionism, 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 all the time. What, are they, what, what does this post-Zionist nonsense mean? Well, you know, it's the, it's the hashpah, it's the influence of Zionism. Listen, if Zionism is only a project to make Israel, right? Then after Israel is created, Zionism is over. Now you just have regular Jews. You have, if Zionism is a movement to get the Jews back to their homeland or to create a homeland for the Jews or to create a safe place for the Jews, it's obsolete. After the project is done, there's no more project. So now you're just living normal Jewish lives. Or that it's obsolete because Jews are not persecuted now. So why do you need a, a safe place for Jews? So if Jew, if Zionism is only a project to create something for the Jews, so the project either failed or the project's obsolete or the project succeeded, but there's no more making a project now. So there's no more Zionism. But guess what? That itself is Zionist ideology. That Zionism is merely a project presupposes that the Jewish people are a nationality, that the Jewish people wanted what they call a safe place, that Israel's going to be or won't be a safe place, that the Jews wanted self-determination. The idea that there's no Zionist nowadays is itself a Zionist idea, because if you don't presuppose the Zionist idea, you don't have, the, the I think falls apart. This is one of the biggest shtick that the Zionists have to conflate the movement with the ideology. They always try to hide the ideology of Zionism. And even when they're not even talking about the movement, when they're just talking about things that they do that are designed to strengthen their ideology or to instill their ideology in us or in the world, they always try to hide the idea that things are made to instill the ideology. For example, this business about drafting the yeshiva guys. They won't say, between themselves they will, it's to make Jews into Zionists. No, it's for security purposes. It's to help the community, that the community should, have a, should be economically sustainable or the community should be secure. When they make a Holocaust Memorial Day, Oh, it's nothing to do with Zionism. It's for the Holocaust victims. No, it has nothing to do with the Holocaust victims. It has to do with Zionism. What does Israel in general, tell me, have to do with Holocaust Memorial Day? Israel wasn't even around during the Holocaust. Why are they celebrating Holocaust Memorial Day? What do they have to do with anything? The Zionist movement happened way before anybody ever thought there was a Holocaust. Why is Israel more entitled to celebrate Holocaust Memorial Day than... Germany, England, America, Russia. The idea, no, that look, look what happens when you don't have a Medina. There's going to be a Holocaust, which of course is the juxtaposition between uh, Yom HaShoah and Yom HaTzmut. And the whole Yom HaShoah celebrations is all, look, this was before there was a Medina. And no, there were heroes from the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising and everybody were here. Now we're all like that. It's, all a, it's a front for their ideology. They always want to instill their ideology. 
Zionism is an ideology and it can, it's, an, it's a historical narrative and it's, it's fake, it's mythological and it's stupid and inconsistent and self-contradictory a thousand different ways. And the only way they can instill it is by, first of all, hiding the fact that they are instilling it and two, using emotional means such as Holocaust or uh, Jewish self-determination or rights, like Herzl said, give them a flag people will die for, but intellectually the whole thing doesn't make any sense. Another example, there's this crazy claim that Zionists make that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Now it makes absolutely no sense, anti-Semitism means in the definition we're giving it, that you don't like Jews, and anti-Zionism means you don't like Zionism. Zionism is an ideology, right? Even if you're anti-Israel, Israel's a country. It's not the Jews. There are people in Israel that aren't Jews, and there are people out of Israel that are Jews. Your attitude towards Jews decides if you're anti-Semitic, not your attitude towards a country, or your attitude towards any particular ideology. But there's a trick over here. I have over here a book written by Benjamin Netanyahu, all about his, well, his politics, and it's aptly titled, A Place Among the Nations. And he explains why anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And I quote, The bitter truth is that the horrors of the Holocaust did not make anti-Semitism unfashionable, they only made some of the old terminology embarrassing. Zionism and Zionists now serve as euphemisms for Judaism and Jew. Dot, dot, dot. It's the contemporary equivalent of Christ killer traitor. Dot, dot, dot. Now here's the punchline. All this has stolen into vogue under the sham disclaimer of I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm just anti-Zionist. The equivalent of, quote, I'm not anti-American, I just think the United States shouldn't exist. So what is he saying? To say, I think Israel shouldn't exist, is the same to the Jews as saying America shouldn't exist to the Americans. Now this is stupid. Two reasons. Reason number one, first of all, Besides the uh, ideology that is inherent in there that I'm going to mention shortly, it's not logical at all because I could be against the existence of a country and actually very uh, uh, in favor of the country's population. I'm sure there are many people here, even in this room, that think North Korea should not exist. But does anybody here have anything against the people of North Korea? I'm sure there are many people here in the room who thought the Soviet Union should not exist. Do you have, did you have anything against the Russians in any of the countries of the Soviet Union? Just because I think a country should not exist doesn't mean I have anything against its inhabitants. So number one, the whole, whole the, the logic, it's just wrong. The statement is just false. But that's not, that's not negated to us now. What's negated to us now is the ideology if you say Israel shouldn't exist, that means, even according to his logic, that you're anti-Israeli, not anti-Jew. If you say anti-Italy, you should Italy shouldn't exist, you'll be anti-Italian. According to his mistaken, according to his wrong assumption. If you think France shouldn't exist, you're anti-French people. If you think uh, Spain shouldn't exist, you're anti the people of Spain. And if you think Israel shouldn't exist, you're anti the people of Israel in the same way. But no, that's not what he says. You're against the Jewish people. You see what's, what's happening? Inherent in this is the idea that Israel is the embodiment of the Jewish people. And who said this more openly? Our good friend Yair Lapid. Said Yair Lapid, when they asked him, is it possible to be anti-Zionist but not anti-Semitic? Quote, I think not. I think it's camouflage. Israel is the embodiment of the Jewish spirit. 
it's more than the nation it's the nation state of all the Jews. Yes, it represents it's it's the voodoo doll of all the Jews. Your attitude towards Israel is your attitude towards the Jews. It became part of Jewish identity. Do you see what's happening here? This is Zionist ideology. And now what do they do? But they see when they tell you this, sometimes they'll they'll actually say well, yeah, it's like being like Netanyahu did. Well, yeah, saying you're you're against uh, Judy, you're against Israel is like saying you're against you're against the existence of France, but you're not against the French people. They won't tell you that hidden inside there is an ideology of Zionism. And if you claim you're one of these people, no, I'm not. I'm not a Zionist. You may still believe that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And you won't even understand why you're saying this. You won't even understand that the only way your statement makes sense is if you accept Zionist ideology. And this is their shtick. Go accept Yom HaShoah. Go accept uh, the, the seemingly innocuous ritual ideas that Zionists peddle. What's wrong with Yom HaShoah? And what's wrong with... Having a secure army, uh, what's wrong with just asking people to share the burden? What's wrong with having a secure country? What's wrong with all of this? And the payload inside this Trojan horse is the ideology. It's always embedded in their rituals, in their ideas, in their days. There's always embedded the Zionist ideology. And their shtick is, their propaganda, is to pass themselves off as a normal nation. We don't have any specific Zionist ideology. We're the same as everybody else. We're the same as France. We're the same as Spain. We're the same as Italy. Italy has their nationality. Spain has their nationality. We have our Jewish nationality. And this sleight of hands that they throw in over there is their, is their ideology. But it's a sleight of hand trick. Security is really not security. It's really their Zionist ideology. Rights that they demand and ask for. Nobody has anything against security, but against their ideology, people do have. Rights, nobody has anything against rights, but people have something against their ideology, which is what they, they are really selling. Their ideology is embedded inside these innocuous things. What do you mean? Everything we do is only, it's security. We have to keep a Jewish majority in the country. We have to make sure that the majority stays Jewish. Otherwise, there'll be holocausts. No, that's Zionist ideology. That, that your country is a Jewish exclusivist, uh, ethnocentric country, and it has to stay that way. No, it's all security. It's all Holocausts, it's all death, it's all stuff that everybody can relate to. No, it's Zionist ideology. And the idea that it's not Zionist ideology is itself Zionist ideology because it assumes automatically that, well, the Jews are to Israel what the Spanish people are to Spain. In fact, in fact, that's what they mean when they say a Jewish state. I mentioned it here previously on Israel's website. It was Avig de Lieberman. I don't know if they still keep his stuff up now that he quit. But um, and Israel's government's website, it explains what a Jewish state is, that they demand their enemies, the Arabs, recognize before they're willing to make peace. Not that they should recognize Israel as a valid political entity and we won't try to kill you? That's not enough. No, 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 no. You have to recognize it as the Jewish state. Now, what's the Jewish state? Now, you think it means, well, that Jews are allowed to live there in peace. No, 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 no. That's not enough. Says Avig de Liebman on Israel's official website. What the Arabs are obligated to believe is that Israel is to the Jews what Spain is to the Spanish and Italy is to the Italians. You have to accept our ideology if you want to negotiate with us. Our religion, our civic religion, that the Jews, Israel is the embodiment of the Jews. You see what's happening over here. It's all about their ideology. And this is all of Zohar, this ideology. Anything that ties the Jewish identity to sticks, stones, 
rocks, countries, anything except or in addition to Kabbalah, Satyrus, Avoid the